Well, hello there, and uh, thanks for watching. Um, welcome to the channel. If you haven't uh, seen it before, and if you're a subscriber, thank you very much for coming back and seeing another video. Uh, I'm Tim. Um, it's uh, my amateur call sign is uh, Mike Six Juliet Victor India, and I also, of course, take part a lot in 11 meter stuff as well. So, like all things radio. Now, this last weekend, what I've been doing is putting together a uh, doublet antenna, 44 feet two 22 foot legs in an inverted V at home and in a minute I'll show you some footage of uh, the actual um, setup itself and, and, and the install I did on Saturday it's Monday today um, I did something very similar last year but made some rudimentary errors about how to route the uh, the 300 ohm twin lead that I used to actually feed it and I'll show you uh, my version this year it's just slightly different to last year um, it's working really well uh, I can tune 40 through to 10. It's a bit fussy on 40 in some frequencies. It doesn't like 7.110 to 120 too much. Just an impedance thing. Uh, the tuner I'm using is an auto tuner, not balanced. It's an auto tuner by LDG. It's a Z Pro. And uh, it's fed via a 4 to 1 balloon with a very short bit of coax, about, well, what, it's about a couple of feet maximum, about a foot actually between the, uh, the ballon and the actual uh, tuner. And then I have about 10 to 12 feet of coax from the tuner to the back of the rig. As I say, she tunes 40 to 10. Um, she also tunes 80, which I didn't expect. Now, when I tried to do this configuration last year using the little Z817 tuner that you may have seen in a previous video, uh, she wouldn't touch 80. Now, the ladder line length is slightly longer by about maybe five or 10 feet got a different tuner, same ballon, um, same configuration in terms of inverted V and length of wire, so who knows, it might be that the tuner I've got now is uh, more adept at handling a wider impedance. I'm under no illusions, 44 feet of wire for 80 metres is going to be pretty rubbish. Um, having said that, using my FT817, so 5 watts, and running off a battery probably more like 3 or 4, um, I worked some stations in the UK on 80 metres. Um, it's what it's going to be used for uh, in, you know, within the UK and possibly some very short uh, European contacts. Um, but worked up to Lincolnshire from the Sussex, that's 200 miles. Um, not a great signal report. I think I was a two and two to him, but he was a five and eight to me. Um, but don't forget, I was only running three or four watts. So not bad, you know, made the trip. So um, I now begin to get that work all Britain thing as well, which I'm trying to do, trying to get all those squares. So um, it's added another dimension. Not ideal, but hey, everything's a compromise in this hobby for most of us. And uh, it's certainly done, you know, helped me to get on to 80 metres, which is fantastic. So enough of me uh, waffling on. What I'm going to do, first of all, in a second, is show you a very rough, rudimentary drawings, so I don't laugh, of how I've actually you know, constructed the, uh, how it looks in terms of the actual installation itself. And then I'll show you some clip of, uh, of me actually showing you the actual, actual installation, as it was on Saturday. Um, I've got one or two clips of QSOs which we've made, but uh, nothing too spectacular. The bands were up and down. There was a con contest on Saturday as well, which was restricted to uh, Sierra Papa calls. Um, people were getting points for Polish contacts, which is fine, but for the rest of us in, in Europe, it meant we didn't really get a look in. People didn't really want to speak to anybody outside of Sierra Papa, which isn't great. Um, but there you go. That, 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 that aside, uh, I, thought, I thought it was a really successful weekend for me. It took me about three or four hours to put it together. Uh, I took my time um, to try and make it work. So hopefully, fingers crossed, the installation will, will hold. It'll... Um, It'll set in, it'll be okay for the summer. And uh, what it will allow me to do, and I'll stop repeating on in a second, what it will allow me to do, because I'm using an auto tuner, it means I'm able then to, uh, if I want to bring stuff in from the shack over the winter, because it does get cold out there, um, I can always bring my rig into the, into the kitchen and run a different bit of coax into the house from the auto tuner. So um, there's benefits there as well. Anyway, enough of me repeating on. Um, I'll show you the little rudimentary drawing first of all in a second, and then you can have a look at the installation itself. 
Just one more thing. My garden is 30 foot by 30 foot of usable space. So as you can tell, it's a fairly typical small British garden, probably smaller than average. You may have a smaller one, you may have a larger one, but don't forget, if you've only got like a 20 foot bit of space to use, set up a 20 meter dipole in an inverted V. You don't need 33 feet of space. Get the inverted V down. You can cram it in. And dipoles are very kind. The ends of dipoles can droop. You don't have to have them completely flat or completely down in an inverted V. You can droop the ends, which is what I've done. Enough of me then. Here's a look at the drawing first of all, and then we'll have a look at the installation itself. Thank you. Hi, uh, this is the rudimentary drawing. Now, apologies for the uh, poor lighting and uh, working conditions here with my phone, so I'll try and make this as painless as possible. And please be gentle with my lack of uh, technical ability here. So this is the this is the doublet. Now, first of all, you can see at the bottom, I've got 17 feet there. So that's the left-hand leg. And across to the middle here, where is it? There, there you go. That's the middle. <laughs> right there where is my finger there that's the center pole it goes up 30 feet right to the, to the apex and from the left hand pole to the middle i've got 17 feet to play with okay i put the left hand pole up 20 feet all fiberglass poles these so the wire runs from the apex down here and just droops down approximately six seven feet and that's the wire the other side, I've got even less room to play with because I've got a shed around here, which means I can't put the pole exactly halfway between the two ends, which would be about 15 feet. So the shed mean just ends here. So I've literally got the pole there where, where I've mounted it, the, the tall pole, which means I've only got 13 feet to play with until that end on next door's fence. So again, I've got a pole strapped to that, again at 20 feet in height. This time I've got about 14 feet of wire dangling down then 8 feet there. So the, the, the lowest any of this antenna is going to be, at the very end, which doesn't radiate much anyway, is about 12 feet from the ground. Don't forget with a dipole, doublet, whatever you want to call it, any centre-fed antenna, it's the first, well, probably 60 to 70 percent of the wire that really radiates the most. And I've got about all of that to here. On this end, it goes to about here. So that's the critical thing, which is why you can slope down or zigzag the end of dipoles wherever you want to do it. Anyway, I'm really sorry about the, the lack of technical uh, notes here. I hope you got that. But one thing I will add, if you're using fiberglass poles, be prepared for some bend. So it'll bend in that way, and this one will bend in that way, which means you can probably knock a foot or so off the actual length that you have. So in reality, I've got 16 feet, and in reality, I've got 12 feet. And the final thing, if you're new to doing this, so if you're not sure how to calculate or what angle these two wires should be in an inverted V, the overall angle between these two wires should be about 90 degrees or greater. Once it gets less than 90, not, not it's slightly less than 90, not a problem. Get down to 70, 70 degrees, maybe slightly less, you start to see problems uh, with your radiated signal being cancelled out a little bit. So, to make sure that each of these is at least 45, which adds up to 90, okay, make sure that bit there is 45 and that bit there is 45. If you know that the height where you're going to be tying this antenna off to is going to be 10 feet, for example, this is 20 foot high, that's 30 foot, so that is 10 foot higher than that, so the height is 10 feet. As long as the distance between your centre and your end is equal to or greater than that 10 foot, then that angle is going to be at least 45 degrees or more. So I've got 10 foot here, 12 foot here in reality, so that's going to be slightly better than 45 degrees. This side, again, 10 foot difference in height, and I've got around 16 feet, so that's comfortably more than 45. So the overall angle, this isn't an exact angle drawn here, by the way, but the overall angle is something in the region of 93 degrees. Something like that. So that's fine. That's doable. That's not a problem. Anyway, I thought I'd help you out with that. I hope you, this is not too rubbish. It probably does. Um, next clip, then, is the actual install itself. And um, one or two QSOs. Not many, but one or two to show you. Anyway, there you go. I'll stop, uh, <laughs> I'll stop moving the camera around for no apparent reason. And uh, you can see the next bit. Cheers.
Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome to my uh, 2018 version of a doublet antenna. Um, mine was probably one up uh, last summer and uh, I've gone for it again this summer. Uh, very similar, inverted V, this time slightly higher, but seven feet higher at the top. Uh, going down to that side there, it's dripping down about six or seven feet, which you can do with the end of dipoles. And that one's a bit similar as well, but not going down quite as much. Uh, okay, just going to show you how she's made and what I've done to put it together. Right, with well, what we've done, we've strapped the pole to um, a fiberglass stake, which I've put into the ground. And that's pretty solid, as you can see there. And then we've got the ladder line, 300 ohm, being fed at the top. And the ladder line goes behind this little shed here, which you can't see. But then across here, look. And then up into the shed, running across the top of the, uh, just above the, um, the window here. Basically drawing pin and a uh, cable tie. And there's a little gap in the shed, it goes in there and then runs into Bear with me, mind the camera work. This is the shack. The actual uh, cable tie runs down into here. To the four to one ballon, short bit of coax into the tuner, which is the Z11 Pro. Which I bought second hand from a good friend. So that's powered from a, a battery, a 36 amp hour battery, which is more than sufficient for this. It's not a very big current draw at all. And then uh, the coax runs underneath the, sh the shelf, <laughs> very bit untidy here, uh, all the way along to here. Uh, you can see in the corner there, and down into the back of the rig. And there you go. So um, noise levels much better. Uh, usually about S3 with the end fed on 20. Uh, where are we? We'll find a clear frequency here because it's a, it's a contest going on. Surprise, surprise. It's done about an S1 to S2 noise floor. And uh, the tuner is, is on automatic tuning mode, which means I can just literally key up and it tunes. And I've already uh, been using 20 uh, quite a lot this, this afternoon, or just tuning on 20 quite a lot more than anything. Um, so you can hear some signals now. 41 centers is quite clear, so we'll just put into FM quickly. Key up. It's already tuned. And the SWR indicator, if I go over to the, uh, to the tuner there, you've got the three lights, or four lights. I see it's less than 1.5. If we go down to some of the other bands, okay, 40 is very busy. Again, these have been pre tuned, so. Oh god. Automatically kicks in. And it's already been tuned. Now, the bonus with this, let's turn this down. It gives me um, 80 as well. It's only a 44 foot uh, doublet, so it's not going to be the most uh, uh, efficient radiator on 80, but uh, she'll do a job. That's a little bonus. And say so the noise floor. Um, is about two S points lower on 20 and 40. So I've got an S3 noise floor on 40 after she's been tuned uh, onto the band via the tuner. And it's about S1 to S2 sometimes on 20. Uh, 15 and 17, very tunable. In fact, she tunes everything from 80 to 10. Probably most resonant, I would have thought, on 20 and 17, which would be the band she should do particularly well on. Uh, I should do okay on 40. Um, Short hops into Europe and into G would be what she'll be for. 80 will be very, very poor performer, but at least she tunes in it. I can listen and maybe have a few local contacts on 80, so that's all right. Uh, 10 is very quiet. I mean, she's an inverted V, so she's not going to be brilliant on the low, on the on the higher bands. But um, there you go, she works. So there you are. That's the uh, the 44 foot doublet, and uh, maybe I'll include one or two contacts I've made today. There is a contest going on. It's the Sierra Papa contest. Um, which basically means everyone's chasing Sierra Papa call sign stations, so everyone's going for Polish stations today, so there you are. 
Anyway, we'll see how it goes. It might make one or two contacts, you never know. Anyway, 73, and uh, thanks for watching, and um, I'll uh, update you later on, maybe in the next few weeks, as to how this doublet is working. 73, and uh, good luck. Bye-bye. Mexico 6, Japan, Victor, India. Mexico 6, Japan, Victor, India. Mexico 6, Japan, Victor, India. Mexico 6, Julian, Victoria, India. Thank you, 59 Guatemala. 59001. Number 1, thank you, sir. You are that. India. Hello, team. How are you today? 5 and 9. I'm very good, sir. Thank you very much for responding. You are very good. 5 and 9. Excellent signal, my friend. QSL? You too, my friend. Great to copy you again. Have a great day. Uh, evening on the radio. 73, good to X. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, dear team. Uh, have a good uh, time as well. 73, this is Lima Zulu 5, Delta, Delta, QRZ. Mexico 6, Juliet, Victor, India. Mexico 6, Juliet, Victor, India. Five nine zero zero four, number four.